Learn some Torah, friends. Third day of Hanukkah, and we are in Parshat Miketz. Miketz brings us close to the end of the book of Breshit. Here we are racing through the Joseph story suddenly. And suddenly is the right word because we find the king of Egypt, Paro, having dreams. And we have had a theme of dreams. Joseph has had dreams before him. Jacob has had dreams. And remember that dreams themselves, according to the Torah, are not the stirrings of the unconscious, as Freud suggested. They are actually messages from God. We know this because in the book of Numbers, chapter 12, as we've reviewed, there is a section where Miriam and Aaron complain about the singularity of Moses' status in relationship to God. And God says, don't you understand? To all my other prophets I speak in dreams, but not to Moshe. I speak to Moshe face to face, which means that dreams carry messages. They're not explicit messages. They're metaphoric ideas. And for the Torah and for the rabbis afterwards in the Talmud, those messages come from God. They're meant to be thought about. They don't tell the future <coughs> necessarily, though Pharaoh's dreams in this part should do. But what's also important is that interpretation is not an automatic skill. And sometimes people whose very profession would be the interpretation of life fall short, as do Pharaoh's magicians, who seem to be able to do all sorts of other things, which is why they have the status they do. They're not charlatans. They're just not powerful enough or attuned in the right way to these dreams. And the, the Parsha begins with, after two years' time, which means Joseph has now been in jail for two years, after he has correctly interpreted the dreams of the baker and the butler. He has two dreams, one about cows and one about sheaves, not happy dreams, and the the verse that really triggers our interpretation here is chapter chapter forty one verse eight, Vaiheva Boker Vatipa Em Rucho. And the translation we have in front of us, which is the JPS translation, says um, next morning his spirit was agitated. Vatipa Em Rucho is from the word Pa'am, like the word Pa'amon, which in modern Hebrew and in ancient Hebrew means bell. His spirit rang in him like a bell as he woke up. This is a startling dream. Imagine being asleep and then suddenly waking up and the shock of it, inside of you, your soul is ringing like a bell. That's what Paro felt. And there are stories about foreign kings dreaming throughout the Hebrew Bible. There's Nebuchadnezzar, who has a dream. There's Paro, who has a dream. And then later, we actually hear about a sleepless night with King Ahasuerus from the story of Purim. He couldn't dream. And think about these as a strange kind of trajectory. Kings that wield enormous influence in the world, whose actions interact with Jewish fate and destiny. And Rashi says about this one, Paro, and Nebuchadnezzar, where the language for Nebuchadnezzar is vatit pa'em rucho. Almost the same language is here in Paro, vatit pa'em rucho. That in Paro's case, he woke up and he remembered the dream, but he couldn't remember what it meant. While he was having it, he knew what it meant. But when he woke, all he remembered was the story, not its meaning. When Nebuchadnezzar dreamt, he woke and couldn't remember the dream or its meaning and required a different kind of intervention. Ahasuerus couldn't even sleep. I'm adding that on. That's not Rashi's original comment. Let's use these three very powerful figures and think about ourselves just for a moment. On this third day of Hanukkah, where more and more light has come back into our lives, where we have decided to banish the darkness with increasing intensity every day, which, by the way, according to the rabbis, is a hidur mitzvah. It's an embellishment, an adornment of a mitzvah. It's not a requirement. The basic requirement is one candle total for each night, just one candle. But we will not be settled until the world has more and more light, until our lives have more and more light. And perhaps we do this because it's ritual. Perhaps we do it because it's what you do. But perhaps what we should be doing, pardon me for being a little bit directing here, is taking stock of the dreams that we have had. Perhaps we've even forgotten some of them. Allow them to generate more meaning through us 
in lives, our own and in the lives of others. Maybe we've forgotten the meaning. These last number of years, where we found each other, friends, this community was born of necessity. These years have found us, I think, struggling a little bit. And now, for many of us in the world, I read a comment from a friend of mine about a shiva that she went to. My friend is struggling with the effects of long COVID. So she was one of the only two people in a very crowded room wearing a mask. And that was very hard for her. I'm not coming from a place of judgment. I'm not coming from a place of, of concern that all of us are making the wrong decisions. What I'm saying is that the struggle to dream and to seek meaning and to be full of light, that is ongoing for many of us. There's going to be a gradual process of rebirth, of return. And we should not expect it to be sudden and not at the same pace for each of us. For some of us, like Paro, we had a dream, we knew what it meant. We woke up and our souls were ringing inside of us. We were not calm. We remembered the dream, but not quite what it meant. But maybe even for some of us, we'll be like Nebuchadnezzar. We had a dream and while we were dreaming, we knew what it meant. But now that I, I'm awake, I don't even remember what the dream is, let alone what it means. And maybe like a Rosh, maybe we won't even remember what it is to sleep. The world is not a reflection of Hanukkah yet. Hanukkah is a vision of the world as it could be. Seven days of creation plus one additional gift. A vision of the world not as it is, not as it was created, but as we can help it continue to grow. It's a vision of the world to come, to have eight sources of light. This world so far at maximum has seven, but maybe with enough tending to our own souls that are agitated differently, maybe not every moment, but sometimes, and empathy enough to remember that other people are going through stuff too, to be sources of light and not heat, and to bring all of that into one beautiful pursuit of meaning, pursuit of healing, a pursuit of renewed strength. So on this third day of Hanukkah, I wish you a less agitated soul, the gift of calm, the gift of vision, because from that place of more calm, just a drop more, maybe we'll be able to tap back into our dreams, maybe even discover ancient or enduring or latent or waiting meanings. You have it within you, friends. We can dream again and we can be full of light. Your eyes are a source of light. Just close them for a little bit so you can regain that power. Let's go into a good day, friends. Here we go. Bless you, friends. See you tomorrow. Happy Hanukkah.